Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today I'm going to take a look at quite a special replay featuring a very nice demonstration on how to play the legendary Japanese battleship Yamato. Piloted here by one of my clanmates, Jody Makara. I've included the complete Yamato ship build with upgrades and captain skills at the end of the video, so let's jump straight into the action. This map is called Hotspot and our brave captain has started centrally on the northern side with the support of two destroyers in his division, a Kaborosk and a Shimakazi, and he is pushing towards the Alpha Point to support them and start putting these legendary guns into action. Opening salvo just slants around the stern of the enemy Grosseker first. As you can probably surmise from the red tracers, our captain is using the Yamamoto bonus captain, which provides specific bonuses for achieving certain achievements in game. Our captain continues to scan around. You should be always on the lookout for that broadside target, especially early game like this when ships still maneuvering into position can be plane spotted and be especially vulnerable. Enemy Minotaur is quite fortunate there and escapes with just one overpen. It seemed the vast majority of our fleet is at A. Took some incoming fire there from probably one of those Yamatos or the Kerfirst at A. Most likely not Yamato as he also has red tracers. Shots away on the enemy Yamato who is showing quite a large amount of broadside he would seem to be constantly adjusting his speed 6300 hit something that you should be always watching very closely adjusting your speed to constantly throw off the enemy's aim but that enemy Yamato is showing he's playing a dangerous game showing so much broadside despite manipulating his speed quite well Shots out on the enemy hipper. Yamato's 460mm guns are capable of overmatching most cruisers, even when well angled like this, so always take those shots when possible. Some shots on his superstructure, minimal damage. Next target of choice is the enemy Kerr first. Our captain is quickly scanning around to get a feel for the battlefield. Targets briefly unspotted. Shots out on the enemy car first. Captain decides to turn in and angle towards this battleship just in case. Once again, shots landing just around the stern. A lot of these opening salvos during a game are quite speculative at long range. Players are still jostling for position. Everyone is basically aware of the enemy's position due to the carrier's air spotting and not enough time has elapsed for any substantial kind of flanking maneuver so the majority will be well angled and in this curve first case angled and kiting away which is one of the German battleship's strongest positions the vast majority of Yamato captains will play passively while remaining fully angled and while I'm unwilling to cast disparity on this playstyle, and under certain circumstances it is an extremely valid tactic, I love seeing battleship captains being aggressive and pushing forward. Enemy Izumo is our captain's next target and is about to make a turn broadside. Shells away. They are looking quite good. That's the first Citadel hit of the game and a chunky 32,000 salvo. Pushing forward like this not only allows you to close the distance, to reliably land more shots on target, but more often than not it will spur your teammates into pushing forward and supporting you. Knowing themselves they have heavy firepower support and battleships capable of tanking damage for them. Enemy Kaborosk was quite fortunate there to avoid that salvo. And the enemy Implacable sends in his first wave of torpedo planes. 
Enemy Salem is spotted broadside. Normally a juicy target whenever you see any kind of cruiser showing broadside like this. Shots out, he is slowing down. Another Citadel hit, 21,000 damage. He has managed to get unspotted. Oh, he does get spotted again. Which is unfortunate, our captain has just pushed forward. He's unable to lob shells over this island. You can see that the mountain icon on screen. Enemy Izumo has been spotted. And is attempting to retreat. He is well angled with shots away. The power of Yamato shells is not to be underestimated. 17,000 hit there on that enemy Izumo, despite the fact he was almost fully angled away from the target. Salem goes down there on the far side. Enemy Kabarosk is low health, shots away on the Cabra. And proved to be quite a difficult target to hit at range. Enemy Kaba is quite fast. Enemy Carfirst now is quite low. Captain turns to attempt to finish off this Carfirst. We need to remove this ship from his flank as quickly as possible. Before he can turn to the rest. And there's our captain's first kill of the game. 96,000 damage. The cyclone that started on the east side of the map has now progressed into the centre, which will greatly affect spotting ranges and dispersion on shells fired into the cyclone area. Minotaur is spotted there full broadside. And he's very fortunate with three overpens. He is ever angled ever so slightly away and slowing down. Shots out again. He does take a, ch a chunky hit from somebody else. Citadel hit on the Minotaur. With just one shell hit. Our captain predicts he's moving forward. Unfortunate. Enemy Des Moines is spotted. Games can rapidly become quite chaotic during cyclones with reduced spotting ranges, but on the flip side, it can also permit very aggressive gameplay at times, allowing battleships to come to close range they would normally not be accustomed to during normal weather games. Shells out again on the enemy Des Moines. One overpen. Shells coming in from the Kaaba. And the Des Moines there is quite fortunate. Enemy Kremlin up there with that Des Moines. And now our captain is in a position between two groups of enemy ships. Kaba would seem to be reversing there. He's starting to go forward, so he is moving quite slowly. Captain predicts the Kaba turning in, and he eats full penetration damage from three shells. And the ca enemy Kabarosk goes down for our captain's second kill of the game. Time to angle smartly in against the enemy Yamato and Izumo. Do have a division mate uh, in his Shimakaze out front harassing the Izumo at the moment. This enemy Yamato is once again showing quite a bit of broadside. And a very nice double citadel strike there, 42,000 damage. Enemy Yamato replies with 12,000 damage of his own. Enemy Yamato has not learned his lesson and is still showing way too much broadside at this range. Friendly Shimakaze takes big hits in the smoke. Another big damage citadel strike on the enemy Yamato. 
friendly Shimakazi has smoked up for the moment. Time to focus on this enemy Azumo. Torps incoming from the enemy Minotaur. Friendly Shimakazi has eaten the Torp there and is flooding. Enemy Azumo is burning and goes down to a fire set by Air Captain Secondaries. Shimagazi goes down in the same moment to flooding from the Minotaur, which is unfortunate. The enemy Yamato is attempting to flee now, he's quite low health. The match is still quite finely balanced at the moment. Just a bare 100 points between the teams. Only one ship difference at the moment. Enemy Yamato is still retreating. Takes another almost 5,000 hit. He's now very low. See if our captain can finish off this Yamato. He gets undetected right at the wrong time. And all those shells go sailing harmlessly overhead. Patience really is everything when it comes to firing battleship guns effectively. Being a DD main, I can personally find the sometimes 30 seconds wait between firing almost an eternity. And experience really is everything when it comes to learning how to lead your guns on target reliably. Knowing the top speed and judging visually from their smokestacks to gauge that level of speed will go a long way to increasing that percentage of shell hits in the long term, regardless of RNG. There's the high caliber award. And our friendly Yamato takes out the enemy Yamato. We're now in a 6 on 4 situation. Enemy Kremlin is spotted, parked right by that island. He is fully angled. Our captain makes the smart choice of aiming for his superstructure. Angles inwards. The enemy Kremlin is firing HE, which is a valid option against a fully angled Yamato. Enemy Minotaur pops up out of the smoke at close range. We've had a number of brushes with this Mino already. It's third time lucky. Enemy Mino gets taken out for our captain's fourth kill of the game. turning back on the location of that Kremlin. We are plane spotted. There are more torpedo planes coming in from the implacable. Our captain angles in, so not to make himself an easy target for this drop. Implacable drops on our bow. While the enemy Kremlin makes a rush forward. Our captain aims for his bow plating as he's well angled. And it would seem that the enemy gremlin is intent on ramming at this point. Our captain slows his speed. to get off another volley before this enemy Kremlin rams. There's the fireworks, Die Hard Award, Confederate Award, and the Kraken Unleashed Award, and that lovely big hit point boost from the Yamamoto's bonus for the Kraken Unleashed Award. Our captain celebrates with a toot of his horn. And that leaves us with one enemy ship left remaining on the enemy team. The carrier, Implacable. 
Our captain gets the congratulations in chat from some of his teammates. While the enemy carrier persists in sending in some dive bombers. The game is well and truly won at this stage. Captain gets a volley off on the enemy implacable. 5300 damage. Due to Yamamoto's Kraken Unleashed award bonus, we also get a slight increase in main battery reload speed. And that final volley takes out the implacable. And so ends a really nice game in the Yamato with over 320,000 damage, 6 kills and a host of achievements. Before going to the full ship build, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I added some more recent videos at the end, and until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it. Starting off, I always recommend using premium consumables. In combination with the superintendent captain skill, you will get 5 charges of repair party and 4 fighter squadron charges. With reduced cooldown times, which can greatly increase your survivability and effectiveness in combat. Moving to the ship upgrades, starting with Main Armaments Mod 1, Damage Control Mod 1, Aiming Systems Mod 1, Damage Control Mod 2, Concealment System Mod 1, Main Battery Mod 3. It's this slot 6 where you can eventually install the Yamato Legendary Module when you complete the personal assignment Too Big to Fail. Next, the Captain Skills, starting with Priority Target, Expert Marksman, Superintendent, and Concealment Expert for your first 10 points if you happen to be training a new Captain. The final 3 skills you may train in your own order of preference. Adrenaline Rush, Basics of Survivability, and finally Fire Prevention for a complete 19 point well-rounded captain. Let's see what this build means for the ship's final stats. For survivability, Yamato gets 97,200 hit points, further enhanced by 5 repair parties with some of the best torpedo protection damage reduction in the game at a staggering 55%. Main artillery is stuff of legend. 3 triple mounted 460mm turrets, the largest caliber guns in the game, with two in the front and one at the rear, with a massive firing range of 26.6 kilometers. Yamato's AA defense rating of 60 isn't exactly mind-blowingly good, however this is further enhanced by four fighter squadron consumables. Yamato gets a top speed of 27 knots, a turning circle of 900 meters, and a rudder shift time of 22.1 seconds. Finally, Yamato's concealment rating of 41 means you will be surface detected at 14.1 kilometers and by aircraft at 10.4 kilometers.